Welcome back to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. We left you on the last segment. We told you we're going to talk about uh, the lawsuits what that is are flying name? around. Okay. What is your name? My name is oh. Aurelio Martinez, okay. and this is Stephen Johnson. Now, he, he really didn't Thank care you. about my name. He just wanted to hear his name. That's all. He just wanted to hear his name. <laughs> That's all. But anyhow, uh, I'm excited for this because, you know, in boxing, you always hear about the boxers arguing and talking smack a bunch together. But now we got the we got the big the big boys. We got Oscar De La Hoya filed a humongous lawsuit against Al Heyman and his premier TV uh, uh, champions. champions. Uh, organization and now following suit you got Bob Arum of Tampa a top rank which followed suit and, and also filed their hundred thousand hundred million hundred million uh, lawsuit against him now let me tell you something about this they're citing that he's basically monopolizing and uh, cornering the market by by scheduling uh, uh, dates with the main menu venues and then what he does, he locks the venues up so nobody else can get him for them specific dates. Exactly. And then when he then when he comes out and does his date, when it's too late for anyone else to put a show and pu publicize it, he cancels the dates at the other venues. Exactly. Okay, now, they talked about that. They talked about the Muhammad Ali Act, you know, which, of course, is federal document. And I think that's where their beef comes in mm -hmm. is when you're talking about federal documentation and you're not just talking about hearsay. You're not just talking about something simple, simple like a... Uh, um, defamation of character or something which are very hard you're talking about something that's in writing and it's a federal it's a federal uh, uh, documentation the Muhammad Ali Act so let's talk about that I think Al Heyman is in trouble I think he's in trouble too yeah, the only thing is this uh, is that us as boxing fans we know that what he's trying to do um, is basically what De La Hoya and Top Rank tried to do at some point but but the difference is is that he has now, um, when I say he, I'm talking about Al Heyman, you know, with his premier boxing uh, champion series. He's, he's locked up a lot of these times on, on ESPN and NBC and CBS. Mm -hmm. And um, whereas Bob Arum and, and Golden Boy were content to have everything involved with Showtime and HBO. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, like you said, I do think that Al, Al Heyman is in trouble. I think uh, one of the reasons he's in trouble with radio is because when you file a four hundred million dollar lawsuit, you file a one hundred million dollar lawsuit. That means there's big time attorneys involved. Oh yeah. And these attorneys' fees are they're re insane. Uh, you know, sometimes they're like four or five hundred dollars per hour. Exactly. You know, and I mean, and that exactly. that mounts up real quick. And you're not and, talking one attorney. You're talking a group. That's a right. Group of it's, attorneys. So it's yeah. it's, it's yeah. a it's a uh, uh, um, an, uh, an attorney's uh, association. Okay, where like you said, um, where it's. Uh, Martinez, Johnson, and Smith, okay, where all three of us are going to be in on this. And that's what he's looking at. And I don't know how long CBS and NBC, you know, and ESPN would want to be part of that, you know, putting that bill for that because they will be part of paying that bill no, no matter how it all comes out. When you look at the bottom line, well, sure. the money they're paying to him, at Heyman, you know, a bunch of that has to go him. He's got to do something. And I've been in, in you know, the stance long, for a long time now. It was good when he started. Everyone was like, hey, these, we're seeing some fights we'd like to see. But he was paying guys a million dollars, $750,000. And we're like, how long is this going to last? Big money. Yeah. Okay. And so, see, now we're at the point where this is all coming to a head. Like you said, I think Al Heyman is in trouble. And the comment that one of his groups of attorneys came out and they said, all this is just uh, basically, you know, sour grapes. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well. You kind of do. When you just say it's just sour grapes, you're not giving us any substance to why it's not, you know, there's no grounds for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sour grapes, sometimes sour grapes is legitimate. <laughs> exactly. I mean, of course you're going to have sour grapes when uh, someone's doing something that's treading on, on, Pure on ground. being illegal. Heck yeah. you know, being illegal. And, um, but he's in trouble, not so much because Al Heyman doesn't have $400 million in well, the bank. Well, that's, okay? that's first. The, the thing about it is, what if his sponsors, the people backing him up, the financial backing behind Heyman, the financial exactly backing right. behind paying these athletes these big money, he can't pay them if they pull. That's and and exactly I'll tell you, that's, right. that's the danger he has right now because I think you're going to see that in the next move because it's not Al Heyman that's going to have to settle this in court. It's his financial backing. Okay, They're the ones that are going to have to hire the attorneys and do this because they're the ones that are liable. They're the yes. ones that are going to have to pay it. Pay all this, okay? You can 
you can take Al Heyman's house away or whatever you want, but it, it's it's not it's not going to hurt him as much as just destroying his boxing venture as much as it's going to hit the big boys that are financially backing him in the pocket. Yeah. Okay, so I think the I think one of the west best ways for them to settle a lawsuit and go back to Arab and and and, then, and, and settle before court is saying okay, well we're canceling him, we're we're withdrawing. That deal is dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, and ha there's no way, no way in hell ha Al Heyman can continue with his contracts with the TVs, the NBC, and all this stuff when he doesn't have that money behind him. Well, like I said, it just he, doesn't he, happen. Radio, he would have to go to them and say, you know, I need more money. And they're, they're, first thing that they would say, you know, um, I, I would imagine that they're, you know, they've got somebody there and uh, that has their, you know, finger on the pulse of boxing, and they say, well, first thing we're going to do is you're going to have to drop these. Uh, these salaries that you've been paying these guys, yeah, yeah. and see, he's been promising everybody big money, and up to now, up to now, he's been paying big money. Yep. But we, that was one of our concerns in the beginning was how long would he be able to, con to continue paying this big money mm -hmm. for what he calls the up and coming uh, fighters to keep everybody interested. Well, see, see, there again, there again, Steve, it's easy to spend someone else's money. Like exactly. You, you want to go eat some uh, steak? You pay. You pay. Yeah. I have me a filet mignon and. Uh, a porterhouse. Man, how many times have I done that to you? And you said, let's go to Lunch I'm going. I'm like, well, let's go to Ruth Chris, man. Now, I can, can spend your to, money. I can spend your money up, real uh, easy. Yeah, you know, we end up going to Taco Bell. And, and, and at, the, like, at the same time, we can go, why, why don't we go ahead and leave a $1,000 tip, man? Because them, them witches work real hard. <laughs> see, it's a whole different thing, like you said, when you start digging into your own pocket. Uh, Golden Boy Promotions, Top Rank, they've got the money. And for them to file a lawsuit, their attorneys, this is nothing for them. They've been, they've had their groups of attorneys for ages. And they they just love this. They're, they'll just feed on it. And, and you know, the biggest thing in radio, like you said, involving the Muhammad, Muhammad Ali Act in this whole thing is really crucial because if you look at what the contention is of Top Rank and Golden Boy and Al Heyman really have no legs to stand on, that they're they're up against the wall. Okay, He's we're gonna, we're going to watch that lawsuit because it's going to get hot and something's going to crash. Okay, but when we're talking about lawsuits, we got three minutes left on this segment. Let's talk about another dispute that's <laughs> going on, and this is by uh, uh, Mikey Garcia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and his his conflict with Bob Arum again. Okay, Bob now, Arum. now we know Bob Arum is true. He does what he does, and he makes a lot of money for boxers, but he also makes money for himself. I mean, that's the way he is. He's a shrewd, the business? a shrewd businessman. Now, uh, obviously, uh, uh, Mikey Garcia, like other boxers before him, have tried to pull out of that contract and say, wait a minute, I want to keep a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. Well, there again, we go back. Once you sign the mm -hmm. paper, mm -hmm. okay, in order for this guy, you can't just have a, a promoter uh, throw a lot of money into your 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 beginning of your career and build you up and now when you start making the big money saying well wait a minute I don't want to pay you now yes okay so now you know, I just read something where they they, they said you know Mikey uh, is, is making uh, is winning but it was it was stupid because it didn't hold no teeth it didn't say how he was winning or he was winning and my whole my whole response to that is in the meantime he's sitting on the sidelines and can't fight because as long as it's in dispute guess what he's staying on the sidelines. And I think you, you, know had, you mentioned to me yeah, about his, his schedule. Well, he hasn't fought since January of 2014. Yeah. Okay. In January of 2015, remember he said, we're just about there. He said, we're probably going to fight in February. Well, in February, he came back and he said, we're probably going to fight in April. Okay. Just last week, he said, it looks like it's going to be the end of the year. Okay. So for all intents and purposes, what we're looking at, if he doesn't get off his ass and get this thing squared away, he won't fight until 2016. If he fights in 2016, really, who does this remind you of with top rank? Uh, your, your, your favorite, uh, Nonito. That's exactly your what's going to happen yeah. with him, okay? You see Nonito, he allowed his wife, Rachel, to, to, to try to undermine it. And, and once again, it's kind of funny because who tried to undermine top rank? It was Golden Boy, okay? Remember they, yeah. yeah. You know, he tried to top yeah. rank him. And now they figured it out together and they said, hey, you know, we're not going to let that happen. But... But is, is, is specifically for Mikey Garcia, man, I hate to see this because I really like Mikey Garcia a wow. lot. And I'm really disappointed that, you know, we're, we're both big fans of Robert Garcia's brother. And for him to, to take this stand, knowing how these things have panned out in the past, yes. okay, you yes. cannot be out of the ring for any extended period of time. And you just can't do it. And this, in the case for him, now we're looking at a year and a half for sure. Yeah, More yeah. like two yeah. years probable. Oh, my God, Aurelio. 
Yeah, it 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 can ruin a boxer. Look at all the money that 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 he, he loses. Okay, and and uh, uh, by not by not by fighting. Not I mean, fighting. here you got a here you got a boxer that climbed up, uh, built an enormous fan base. Enormous. Uh, enormous fan base. I mean, everyone was just waiting to see uh, uh, Mikey Garcia fight. I mean, just just everything going for him. I mean, he was getting ready to tip. Tipped the jar and start pulling in the big money. He wasn't going to get the quarters and the fifty cent pieces. Now he's going to get the hundred dollar bills and 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 he was going to get the big big money. Okay, and then all of a sudden this comes in. Bottom line is Bob Arum and top rank. Bob Arum's an attorney. Yes, okay, that by profession. That's the first okay. thing you have he to knows remember. what he's doing. And when he had when he when he draws up a contract, you can better believe it's ironclad. Now I'm not I'm not backing up the promoters because. Promotional contracts, you know, I'm involved with five. Yes. Promotional contracts are very, very one-sided. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the way they work is you sign with the promoter, and they will guarantee you so many fights uh, for so much amount of money, X amount of money as you go along. But let's say, according to the Muhammad Ali Act, they're limited in time. Let's say they're for two years or for three years mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever it allows them to do. Okay. The way they get around that is what they say is. In the contract, it states something in there similar to is if we get you a title, a world title, or sometimes maybe a, a regional title, but if we get you a title, then that extends the contract. It starts over. Now we got another three years from when we gave you a contract. Yes. So you sign that, that. You're bound by that. Yes. You're bound by that. So naturally, the promoter then, then, then uh, spends a lot. Perfect example is, is local Mike Alvarado. Mm -hmm. Okay. They signed him, okay. Uh, uh, they guided his career. They, they 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 put him in with a lot of good names that were beyond their 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 uh, their career best, okay. So he started to get names. They started to spend. I mean, they're giving Mike and they're giving these other guys purses of ten, fifteen thousand dollars per purse. So you're making decent money as you're climbing this ladder. Mm -hmm. So now when you get into where you're making the six figures, where you're fighting Brandon Reels and that, okay, top rank is cashing back in, mm -hmm. okay. But at the same time, they're making you money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so fighters have to understand when you're signing a, a contract, you have to understand what happens when and if you make it. And okay? and not only that, yeah. you hit the nail on the head. You have to have proper legal guidance. Okay, where someone legally can tell you in layman's terms, here's what you're locked into. Okay, so then the negotiations come in, uh, and you can decide if you want to from there. But like you said. Um, but see, Bob Aaron being an attorney, he has shown over the years here's the, here's that you're the, not going to beat him in that. So fight it out. Like you said, Mikey Garcia, get back in there, man. Fight fight for the rest of this contract, however long it is. Then you're free to go. But you can't stay on the shelf. You just cannot stay on the no, shelf. Because I'll tell you what, you, you, you wait another year and you're out two years, guess who's waiting for you? Nicholas Walters. He's going to say, come on. Oh, man. He's going to come on. There's a lot of people waiting on Yeah. Me. I mean, it's just... It's just so so basically, boxers. You're kind of you're kind of in a between a rock and a hard damned place. Damned if you do, and damned if well, you Well, because don't. when you're starting, you have nothing. Right. So now you have someone like a Bob Arum, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, 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 any of these uh, big promoters that say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna guide your career, we're gonna boost you up, we're gonna give you a good salary, we're gonna pay for training, we're gonna do this. But this is the consequences. If you go back to them and try to negotiate and say, okay, but if I win a championship, I don't want it to extend three years. You Guess what? They're going to tell you go. That's right. You forget that. So, listen. Think about what you're doing. And if it, and, and just why not even think about it. Know what you're doing. Okay, You can't change your mind at the end of the road once, once you decide to go that route. And I'm going to tell you what. In most cases, it's not a bad thing. If you start mm -hmm. making six figures for your fight... That you've had a very, very, very good career. So uh, you're, you're making money. You can take care of your family. You can you can live well, and you can you can go on from there. I mean, if you're still young, you can continue. You can do like Floyd Mayweather, break away. You can do like Oscar De La Hoya, break away. Mm -hmm. But you have to ride out the wave. So there you go. Okay. And All right. And leaving you with that, we're going to come back and do our, our our last and final segment, where we're going to talk about the hot topics, and we're going to talk about. Um, Different things around the world, fighters that are begging for the big, for the big lottery, Mayweather lottery, things like that. So, we'll be right back. And until then, keep them hands up. Keep them up. <laughs> 